In this lecture, we're going to examine the light bulb. We're going to see how the light bulb functions and why it burns out. So let's begin by first examining the various types of components that make up our light bulb and the electric circuit that our light bulb is plugged into. So let's suppose we take our light bulb and we plug it into our electric circuit. That has a battery of 120 volts. So the battery has an electric potential difference of 120 volts. Remember, electrons move from a higher electric potential to a lower electric potential. And that means electrons will move from our anode to our cathode. So, electrons begin at the negative part of our battery and they begin traveling in this direction along our pathway, along our electric circuit, and then they go into our light bulb. Now within the light bulb, they travel along this circuit, along this metal, and into this special metal. Now this is called the filament, or the wire filament, of our light bulb. And normally, or usually, our filament is composed of an element known as tungsten, which is a metallic element. And the reason we use tungsten is because tungsten has a relatively high melting point, a melting point of 3,410 degrees Celsius. Now we'll see in a moment why a high melting point is required. So, electrons move through our filament and into this part of our circuit, then they go back into our main electric circuit, they travel along this pathway, and finally they end up in our cathode part of our battery. So, <clears throat> let's examine what happens within our filament. So, when electrons move through our filament, or when electrons flow through our filament, our tungsten, in our usual case, the filament becomes or gains energy. Why does it gain energy? Well, electrons moving have velocity. In other words, electrons have mass and electrons have velocity. And that means electrons have kinetic energy. So when the electrons flow through our wire filament, through our tungsten, they carry with them kinetic energy. And some of these electrons collide with our atoms of our uh, wire filament. In other words, they collide with the tungsten atoms. And that means they transfer kinetic energy or thermal energy to our atoms. So on average, our filament increases its kinetic energy. And recall that kinetic energy or thermal energy is directly related to temperature. So that means as this guy increases in kinetic energy as our electrons flow through this wire filament, that means our temperature also increases. And that's exactly why we need to use a metallic filament that has a relatively high melting point. In other words, if this filament had a low melting point, what would happen? Well, as soon as this thing would heat up, it would burst, it would break. And that means our electrons can no longer flow from this point to this point and our bulb will not glow. And we'll see in a moment that's actually what happens when a light bulb burns out. So let's go back to our four, part four. So as our temperature increases in this filament, what happens? Well, we know that whenever there's a higher temperature somewhere and a lower temperature somewhere else, there is a transfer of energy in the form of heat. So, conduction, convection, or radiation. Now, I'm going to make the assumption that this light bulb is not physically touching any other uh, material, and that means that conduction will not occur. So, we're only really worrying about convection and radiation. Now, about 10% of radiation actually occurs, and radiation is one form of energy transfer in which energy is transferred in the form of electromagnetic waves, such as light. And this is exactly what causes our light bulb to glow. In other words, when this metallic filament, when this tungsten heats up, when the energy or when the temperature increases, there is a transfer of energy in the form of light. And that's exactly what we see. Now, other electromagnetic waves, such as infrared waves, are emitted as well. But those guys, we can't see. Now, about 90% of our energy is transferred in the form of thermal energy. In other words, 
convection occurs or our outside molecules found on the outside are heated up and actually this bulb itself is heated up as well and the molecules found inside are also heated up. Now notice that the molecules, the gas molecules inside are the noble gas molecules. So why would we use noble gas instead of anything else? So notice what happens when our electrons collide with our tungsten atoms. Well, when the electrons collide with our atoms, some of these collisions result in the tungsten atoms losing electrons. And that means this material has the potential to undergo oxidation. What the noble gas molecules do is they allow those electrons to go back into our tungsten atoms because noble gas molecules have a very stable electron configuration so they will not accept any more electrons so when an electron bursts out and pops into our atmosphere above those gas molecules will bounce those electrons back into our filament fixing those atoms fi fixing those oxidized uh, tungsten atoms and that's exactly why we need to use a very stable gas such as the noble gases so now let's talk about what happens when our light bulb burns out. So even though at any given time the temperature of our metallic filament is below this temperature, some of the metallic filament, some of the tungsten still evaporates. It sublimes, meaning it goes from a solid state to a gas state. And over time, as time progresses, more and more of this filament begins to evaporate and it actually forms a grayish substance found on the bulb surface and that's why our bulbs turn a different color. They go from being green to a grayish color. The grayish color comes from the fact that these guys, the tungsten atoms, sublime or become gas molecules and then they go back to the solid state and form a grayish color on the surface of our bulb. So, as time progresses this metallic filament begins to become thinner and thinner and eventually it becomes so thin that it can no longer handle the current that's going through this metallic filament and when that happens our light bulb burns out because this metallic filament breaks when this guy breaks when this guy is no longer present that means our electrons can travel from this point to this point and so our electric circuit becomes an open circuit and that means electrons can no longer travel from this section or from the anode to our cathode so our light bulb no longer functions it no longer glows